It was a windy day at the park when Elisa invited Salud to hang out after doing their respective household chores to say important things to Salud. That's it. I was expecting she's gonna cry for me not to leave or something. Oh Lord, why is she rushing this? It's like she wants to leave already. I literally just said, I'm moving far away. Leave. Like little to never see her again leave. Anyway, I want to ask you something. Maybe I've been experiencing some changes on my body. Like, once deep at home, I've got in my skirt. And then now, my breast suddenly feels swollen. It's very like mine. You don't have to worry, Alisa. You got nothing to worry about. You had the guts to laugh at me when it's obvious I'm suffering from my own misery. Can you just help me? I don't believe you help me, Alisa. I told you it's normal. Maybe you should go home and not worry about it. It's like to be able to this. Unbelievable. Oh well, I guess she's right. I mean, she turned out fine. Four years older than me and she looks lovely and gracious. No room to doubt her advice. Fine. Well, we should go home now. I promise mom not to come home. Let's go. Okay, bye. Bye. Wait. Don't forget to uh, put your surprise in your okay? She crying. Ha ha ha. I'm expecting so much from this girl. Oh well. soon arrived at the Buyang at around 7. Yay! We're finally here! I got this! Yes, Lisa! Talk over your side! Take a rest! And then we'll see you next time! Don't forget to go to your new school and your new school. Okay, good night! It was a Monday afternoon and Elisa is now lazing around after they just finished arranging the furniture and clothes.
in their new house. She's waiting for his father to get ready because Elisa has to enroll to her new school today. Then she saw that Salud is online and she thought to send Salud a message to ask how she is and share what happened on the last three days since her departure from Tayo. And I'm fine. How about you? How's it, how is it there? How's the new home? What time did you arrive there? Whoa, take it easy with the questions, William. Well, I'm fine. We arrive around 7, I think. The new house is fine. We live near the church, by the way. The house is basically Sawali, but the roof is Nipa. And the floor is bamboo. There's a toilet at the back of our house outside. And I honestly thought it's gonna be connected to her house this time, but obviously I was wrong. Your house sounds dreamy. Not all, you won't believe this. The bridge here is what I like the most. It swings when you walk on it, and it's not scary. It makes me feel so adventurous. Well, I believe you, but please, but please, for the love of God, don't jump. Haha, <laughs> very funny, Salud. Oh. I forgot father and I will go to my new school today. Be on that later, okay? So I can update you. Sure, and I'm saying I'm sending you good luck. Well, bye-bye. Bye. Well, are you ready? Let's go on now, or you'll be late. Yes, Dad, I'm ready. It will be your fault if I get in on my first day. Don't you get tested with me, girl. When Elisa and her father arrive at the school, an elder new spinster came into view. It's the principal of the school and she's expecting Elisa and her father to arrive. Like that. It's like she's disgusted with me. I don't like this lady already. Mr. Gabriel, this is Elisa, a transfer student from Tayo. Ako sa forever. Magmula nung kita. Eh, kaya nga di ako Elisa was taken aback, and obviously took a liking to her new teacher. After coming home, she plopped to her bed and opened Skype with so much eagerness to tell Salud how her day went. What? You won't guess what happened today. What? The principal was the witch. She was rude and was seemingly mocking me when I said that I was 14. When she's around, I swear, she gives up that smell that makes me sick. That was rude. And please, everyone smells. If you don't stop smelling this instant, you'll hate everyone. Not everyone. I like Mr. Gabriel, my new teacher. He's a good man. Ooh, Mr. Gabriel. He's so dreamy. Ah! I remember when Miss Ramos barged in on the room and he looked so cool. Like he's so used to it and knows how to handle the situation. Hey, you still there? Oh yeah, but I have to sleep now, so I have to be early tomorrow. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye. It was a busy afternoon. Salud and her classmates are assigned to do the gardening chore for a week. Miss Ramos stood there along with Mr. Gabriel to guide and guard the students in the chore. Elisa was fanning the site to get rid of the weeds when she accidentally hit her leg. It bleeds in the blood of silt by the soil under her feet. 
Miss Ramos approached the injured girl and said, Elisa ignored the comment. So is Mr. Gabriel. Then, he brought or rather carried her to the clinic to treat the wound. Mr. Gabriel was obviously nervous and embarrassed and his face clearly showed it by the pinkish tint on his cheeks and neck. But, it was uncertain if it's because he was intimidated by Miss Ramos or it's because it's just the two of them. Are you okay? Does it hurt? After he treated Elisa's wound, they exited the clinic, and Mr. Gabriel frowned when he noticed that the students disseminated already. He then hurriedly flicked out the clinic. Elisa also followed behind, but when Mr. Gabriel reached the fort, he disappeared. Elisa's class has an activity about theme writing. She's pretty good at it, to say the least. But she can't help the triggering of the butterflies swirling in her stomach. Okay, class, I read a very good theme last night, written by one class. And I'm going to read to you now, okay? Elisa sat there dumbly while the ragging butterflies came. Again, Mr. Gabriel, her crush, was reading her theme. Yes, her theme. And she couldn't help but swoon over the fact that she was noticed by her crush. The way Mr. Gabriel was reading her theme was doing wonders to her, and she can't help but to keep her hopes up. It was soft and low, like the acoustic love songs sung by her favorite artist on a vast twilight field. It was then she realized that she fell in love with Mr. Gabriel. It's not a twin crush anymore. She's in love with no other than Mr. Gabriel. Oh my god! He's standing beside me! I can't help but to feel conscious knowing he's there to watch my every move. I suddenly don't know how to write. Everything was filled with thoughts of him. Can't endure the consciousness anymore. She has to go outside. She needs to breathe after all. She went outside the room to calm down and wandered around the corridors. She just can't go back yet, not when she's conscious and could embarrass herself. After the bell rang, her feet brought her to the teacher's lunch. She stood there and trying to take a peek of the object of her affection. Oh my gosh, was he waiting for me? Lisa felt like she could burst any time and was on the verge of confessing her feelings when suddenly somebody came and ruined her opportunity. Hi sir, sorry to interrupt but Miss Mo was asking for the papers in the bar last Monday. Okay, so now, Lisa, you can go home. It was the 10th of February when Elisa fell sick. It has been five days since she was clad inside her room and five days 
since she last saw Mr. Gabriel. She was laying in her bed when she received a notification message from Facebook. The message was from her classmate, Leonor. Maybe it's because of the hole on her heart from the absence of seeing her affection. Or maybe it's because she's just being dumb. It drove her to idly say the lines, I love Mr. Gabriel, on the chat box and sent the message to Leonor. Elisa felt positive, but also relieved that she finally said her long-hidden feelings to someone. Maybe not Mr. Gabriel himself, but at least she said it to someone to ease the baggage on her back. Elisa came back to school that Monday. She was puzzled as to why everyone was looking strangely at her and were whispering to each other while looking at her. Do you know the weight of the consequences and the impact that will happen to you because of your small revelation? Did it take advantage of you? Did it do something for you to conclude these feelings you have for him? No, 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 no. Then, did you know that the job in Mr. Gabriel in this scandal and lack of gossip you made could mean his job and he would never find a job again? I'm granting you a two-week suspension. Let's wait until this scandal dies down. I hope you won't make this mistake again, young lady. You believe now. Lisa went back to her room to fetch her things. Her classmates are still staring at her. And when she glanced at the board, she saw two words on the blackboard that made her blink back in common tears. Lost in her thoughts on her way home, she took the long road just to kill time. She feels awful. She's not proud of what happened. She asked herself, why would Leonor leak the message? Or better yet, why did she even stupidly blurted out something like to someone who she's not even close to? On a spur of moment, she didn't know what possessed her, but she dropped all her things and hurriedly came back to school and took the short route this time. She immediately went to the teacher's lunch with a rapid beating heart. Mr. Gabriel is making her wild. He makes her heart shake, bend and break, but she can't tear away. She came in and she suddenly tripped on a chair. Mr. Gabriel was surprised at the loud bang and looked behind him. He saw Elisa sprawled on the floor with pain written on her face. Elisa couldn't take it anymore and once again blabbed the forbidden words. Mr. Gabriel, sir. Mr. Gabriel has an intent look on his face and did not make a move. After a long moment of silence, Lisa stood up and so is Mr. Gabriel. She was expecting an outlash saying it was wrong and forbidden or maybe Mr. Gabriel returning her feelings. But nothing came. Elisa felt the gush of wind outside the lounge. Other than the noise of the whistling leaves, it was silent until Mr. Gabriel spoke. 